was on the highway heading home from a friend's house late at night. She was driving a really nice, nice, nice Thunderbird. After a while, this big white van drove next to her, and the driver started performing some very rude gestures. And being young and dumb, my mom reciprocated the gestures. Then the dude pulled up a big bowie knife to the window. My mom started panicking and sped up to get away and the van was following right along. Then the guy tried to run her off the road. Keep in mind, they're probably going about 100 miles per hour. She gets on the exit to go home, and he's still following her. When she does get back to her house, which she shared with my grandparents, she pulled into the driveway, honking the horn and screaming, trying to wake someone up. The van pulls into the driveway, just as my grandfather comes out in his underwear with a gun. The dude got scared and drove off. My mom wouldn't leave her house for months except for school. <laughs> but never at night. Ooh, creepy, 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 creepy. That Netflix documentary about the pizza guy in Erie, Pennsylvania, who had a bomb collar put around his neck, then was forced to rob a bank. As a former delivery driver, I was scared, shizzless, the entire time, but also super intrigued by the investigation and the people involved. What? Okay. The 2011 San Fernando Massacre. Mexican cartel members Los Cedas abducted people from buses in Mexico. They executed the old and weak, raped and tortured the women, threw the children in acid, and separated the men. The men were then forced into gladiatorial combat to the death some kind of game to find new cartel recruits. They even forced the bus driver to run the bus over living people. It still blows my mind that this happened right there in Mexico just a few years ago, in 2011. Oh, that is very dark. Hopefully I don't get demonetized, but we'll see. This one is a little bit longer. Just a heads up. Okay. This is an incident that happened to me about 10 years ago in Australia. I was driving home from work one night around 9 p.m. midweek, so the roads were quiet. Quiet, quiet. As I was driving downhill, I heard a sound that was like a jet engine roaring behind me. The next thing I know, a car goes flying past me, going twice the speed limit. It looked like a fairly old crappy car. The car started to get the speed wobbles, then one of the tires came flying off and rolled at speeds downhill, whilst the car spun out and crashed. I stopped my car to make sure whoever inside was okay. A guy got out of the car and looked over at me, and then started moving extremely 
extremely quickly towards me. I don't know why, but I hit my internal locks on the car, which was fortunate because no more than two seconds later, the guy started grabbing at the driver's side door and smashing on my windscreen with his fists trying to get in. I'll never forget the crazy look he had in his eyes. I put my foot down on the accelerator and drove off back home. I decided to swap cars once I got home and drove back to see what was going on. I saw two fire trucks and about four police close to where the incident happened. When I got back to the crash site, the guy was no longer there. That was my dog, I'm sorry. So I decided to head home. The next day at work, I was online, bored, reading the news, when I saw an article that shocked me. The article was about a guy who had been in a police chase for one hour and the police stopped chasing him because it was becoming too dangerous. Turns out, the guy was high on meth, had stolen a car, an hour's drive away, and had been in a hot pursuit since. After crashing the car, the guy apparently crossed the other side of the road and hailed the first car that appeared, which was a taxi. He got into the taxi and stole it. In the process, he pushed the driver out of the driver's side door, and the driver got stuck and dragged at high speeds. The driver died from the incident. I called the police and had a detective assigned to me. He fingerprint checked my car and got a statement. I had to testify in the Supreme Court as a key witness in a murder trial. The guy got 30 years, and they told me that my testimony was one of the main factors in convicting him. I often think back to that night and wonder if I hadn't locked my doors, would I have been the one who got murdered. The end. <laughs> Pretty crazy. Um, okay, let's see. Fatal familial insomnia. The whole story is batshiz and perhaps the most terrifying Wikipedia rabbit hole I've ever gone down. A few families have this genetic disorder, IIRC, and once you develop it, that's it. You die an agonizing death from an inability to sleep. It starts off like regular insomnia, but progresses over a few years until you legit go insane and finally shut down. Nothing, not even the most potent drug, can induce sleep. Even when they tried to put them in comas, the brain remained completely active. That is insane. And that is not good for ASMR content. <laughs> I bet ASMR could buy you to sleep. Just kidding. This is secondhand from my mom, so I don't remember everything, but when I was younger, like three or four, and she was home alone with me, some guy came up to the door. This was before cell phones, and people were nicer, so she answered it, even though it was like eight or nine at night. Well, the guy was asking if he could come in and use her phone. But she said, no. He asked a couple more times before walking in and immediately. 
immediately got stopped by the family dog. Grabbing his hand and holding it tightly, he started to get nervous and my dad's dog led him back to the door. He had walked further in at this point. My mom was able to push him out and lock the door before running upstairs and calling the police. The cops picked him up a little while later and they found out he had been in a bar fight and stabbed a guy a bunch of times. Without my older brother, my mom and I could have been seriously hurt. He was the best dog ever and lived till the ripe age of 15. Oh, that's so cute. So the dog saved them. <laughs> She said older brother in quotes like it was her dog or whatever, I think. <laughs> I lived in an apartment in Marina del Rey, California nine years ago, just before Halloween. A third floor balcony was decorated with a prop of a dead man slumped over in a chair. For a few days, every time I'd come home, I'd look up and think how cool looking it was. I think we know where this is going. <laughs> and wondering why they didn't have lights shining on it at night. After a couple days, people realized it was actually the resident of the apartment who killed himself. <gasps> I literally just got chills. Oh my gosh. I was looking at a corpse, thinking how cool it was. I hate that one so much. Also, I'm sorry if you can't see me very well. Let me back up a little bit. Okay. Alright. Not the scariest thing that I know about, but the scariest thing that ever happened to me. I worked at a pretty well-known record store in Los Angeles in the 90s. A guy in his early 20s used to come in and ask me about records a lot. And one day, in conversation, he let a weird detail about my life slip that I hadn't told him. Which was, my dad is not American. I brushed it off thinking my co-workers had mentioned something um, to him. About a week later, I was driving home, and my car broke down. It was incredibly hot, and I had to walk several miles to get to a payphone, which was outside an elementary school. I called a cab and hung up the phone, and after sitting a moment, it started ringing, so I picked it up. The person on the other end said, Bad luck about your car. Talk to me until the ride gets there. I hung up the phone, but it was definitely that guy. He had to have followed me from home, trailed me from the car, called the school to ask for the payphone number, and found a way to call me at that number. There weren't really cell phones at the time, but there was a gas station and a grocery store across the street, so who knows. I immediately quit my job and moved back in with my parents within 48 hours. I went in to visit old friends from work a few months later, and they told me the guy was arrested for kidnapping. That's pretty scary. I believe I was in fifth grade living in California and it was late at night. My family was just at the house and suddenly there was a huge banging on the door that just kept going like someone was scared. My dad went to answer it 
See you.